Good morning. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Glad that you could join us once again. Our guest is returning with us, Dr. Edward Soffin. He uh, treats patients at the Procure Proton Therapy Center in Somerset, New Jersey. And he's returning to the program this morning to talk with us about forms of radiation therapy to treat prostate cancer. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Soffin. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Well, we uh, talked before a little bit about uh, some of your therapies there at Procure. This morning, we're going to talk about proton therapy uh, specifically for prostate cancer. What uh, specifically is a little bit of the science behind this therapy for use in prostate cancer? Right. Well, first of all, I want to say, you know, we're, uh, we're coming up to Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. So I think it's very important that men, you know, understand about screening, the importance of screening, uh, and finding out whether they have prostate cancer, because when it's found and treated early, it is extremely curable. Now, you know, one of the things about protons, which is a form of radiation, is that the proton specifically seeks out the target, or in this case, the prostate, and the particle, the proton particle gets laid down or stops right in the prostate and gives off all of its energy there. So, there's really no exit radiation. With conventional x-rays or photons or IMRT, there's an entire tract of, uh, of radiation that's deposited from the skin that goes through the prostate and out the other side. This is like a smart bomb that, goes, that gets targeted right into the prostate, stops, gives off all of its energy, and kills the cancer. Well, you mentioned catching it and detecting it early, then it's extremely curable. What are the, some of the symptoms that we should look for, and how can those symptoms prompt us to have this treated very early? Right. Well, first of all, the most common symptom that men present with is no symptoms. In other words, it, it can grow very silently for quite some time. So it's important that men get a digital rectal exam and also have their PSA checked. That stands for prostate-specific antigen, and it is a blood test, which can give us an indication that there might be something going on. Now, in later stages, men may have changes in their urinary function. They may have difficulty urinating. Now, that may not be a symptom of prostate cancer, but it also could be that there's a change in the prostate going on. Um, and then in more advanced cases, men can present with symptoms where the cancer has spread, like bone pain. But the, the really the most common symptom is no symptom. It's really picked up incidentally on a routine physical exam or a routine blood test. So this um, this pinpointing of the target does that preserve other organs? I mean, you know, cancer it, yeah. it spreads and right. chemo also and radiation therapy also damages some of the surrounding organs around the target. Is that eliminated with this proton therapy? Well, that's a that's a great question. It is minimized to a great degree. You're right that radiation and chemotherapy can affect normal cells, and you only get side effects when normal tissues are treated. And what's nice about protons, specifically a, a technology that we have, which is called pencil beam scanning or spot scanning, we can paint little dots of protons throughout the prostate so that we cover it in a very three-dimensionally conformal way. By doing so, we irradiate less normal tissue. There's less bladder, there's less rectum, there's less uh, intestines and bones that get even these low doses of radiation. So the side effect profile is so much less. Men tolerate the proton radiation to a much greater degree than with conventional treatment because there is so much less normal tissue that gets in the way. Is this something that is used only when it's discovered early, or can this be used whether they're in late stage prostate yes, cancer right. as well? Right. Well, we treat early, mid, and late stage, what we call low risk, intermediate, or high risk prostate cancer. Okay. The fields may change a little bit, but almost everybody would be considered a candidate for protons. Um, what I was suggesting is that the earlier we catch the disease, the higher is the likelihood that that man will never hear of it again after he's done treatment. So it just, you know, we want to catch it early because the cure rate is so high. Now, we still cure a lot of patients who have more advanced disease, but uh, it may require the addition of hormones to the protons uh, or even chemotherapy. So um, it's still very curable. We just want to get it as early as possible. Is this a standalone treatment or is it ever an instance where it's used in conjunction with other 
treatments uh, based on the severity or lack thereof of the patient's cancer? Right. That's, a, that's also a great question. So uh, a number of men will go ahead and have a prostatectomy. That's the surgical removal of the prostate. Now, it's the same cure rate as if they have proton radiation, but some men just prefer to have the prostate out. Sometimes we find that there are, uh, there are factors from the prostatectomy specimen. When the prostate is removed, we see that it may have spread right outside of the prostate, and that patient may be a candidate for protons to sort of clean up the area where the prostate was. So oftentimes we will use proton radiation after surgery if we feel that the patient is at risk for a recurrence or if they actually do develop a recurrence in the prostate bed. That's one of the issues with prostatectomy is that patients can develop a recurrence right where the prostate was. And we can use protons to eradicate those stray cells that were left behind. Does age ever factor in whether or not you elect to use this type of therapy? Absolutely. You know, um, prostate cancer, if it is slow growing, it may take many years to grow and spread and threaten a man's longevity. So if we have a very old man, let's say uh, 90 years old, whose life expectancy is less than a few years, we could cure him with protons, but we probably don't have to. On the other hand, what we do is we look at the severity of the, of the disease and we look at the man's age and his life expectancy. And many 85-year-old men are quite healthy and uh, quite virile and um, are looking at another decade to live. And if they have an aggressive cancer, then we would offer them protons. Um, it's interesting, too. The older men tolerate protons. I mean, we see a difference in how they tolerate it, also depending on their age, because their normal tissues don't repair as easily and as readily as they do when they're younger. So even an older man would be a great candidate for protons because his bladder and his rectum will tolerate the treatment uh, to a much greater degree. Now, talk about some of the other uh, treatment options that are available for patients. Well, um, one of the things that we offer men is a fairly new procedure called space or, where we can inject a gel between the prostate and the rectum. And basically what it does with this one-time injection that lasts for three months, it moves the rectum away from the radiation beam. Normally, the, the rectal tissues are right up against the prostate. And there is a modest degree of risk of, of, uh, of irritation of the rectum. This uh, hydrogel, this spacer, moves the rectum away from the prostate, and it gets virtually no radiation at that point. So the side effect profile has gone down dramatically. We've also found that this spacer gel helps men maintain their sexual function. So it's a win-win on all accounts. It's one of the uh, few places in the tri-state area that offers this spacer hydrogel for men with prostate cancer. We have um, extensive nursing service. We have a concierge service so that if patients are coming from far distances, we have a lot of international patients. Um, we can help with housing, with transportation. Uh, if there are event tickets that they might need help in getting or educational services. So we sort of offer a broad range of social services as well as nutrition. Uh, but in terms of cancer therapy, uh, it's really limited to protons. Well, we'd like to uh, go online and learn a lot more about Procure. Where can we do that online? Well, I think if you Google Procure therapy or proton radiation uh, in Somerset, New Jersey, our website will come up, or they can go to PrincetonRadiationOncology.com, and there's a whole section of all of our prostate cancer treatment options, um, as well as a link to uh, Procure. Great. Dr. Soffin, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you so much for returning with us this morning, and I'm hoping to talk with you in the future. Thank you, Neil. It's been a pleasure, and have a great day. You do the same. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud, and be sure to visit our affiliates page, at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm 
and clicking the button that says become a patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.